Washington football. Woo! Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Burgundy Zone. I am your host, Kyle, and I am joined by my co-host, Michael Hall. Uh, Michael Reed. What? Michael, That's not me. Michael Hall is exact not here. Opposite. He is actually <laughs> Look how white. I am. He is actually at the pumpkin patch right now with his. Maybe fiance. Hall's the white one if he's at the pumpkin yeah, patch. That's, what we, that's what we told him, but we don't need to get all into that. <laughs> uh, but it's a victory Friday here, everybody. It's a weird one, you could say. It was a sloppy, ugly win. But that being said, the Burgundy Zone is a part of the Frederick Podcast Network. You can find out more by going to www.listenfrederick.com. But we are joined by a very special friend of this podcast, of this show, and of us just on a human level, Mr. Ken Johansson of Riggers Rack. Thank you for joining us on this Friday, Ken. How are you doing? I'm doing good. A bit slow today, but uh, a beautiful day in the Memphis area. Temperatures in the low 80s, but rumor is we're going to have fall weather big time next week. Hey, so take it when you can get it. Absolutely, sir. And speaking of taking it however you could get it, let's talk about this victory. Washington won 12 to 7 against Chicago. It's a really weird game because offensively, Washington was 2 of 11 on third down on offensively, which is just absolutely putrid. And they have to be able to score more points, Ken. So what did you learn from this game? Because it's kind of an ugly win. and Not a lot of people are really feeling hyped about it, so to speak. You could say it was a really poor showing from both teams. So what did we learn from this win? Well, we learned that the defense is definitely improving. Um, last week, we saw some glimpses of that. Uh, last night, we saw so much more. So I think that's a good thing. Offensively, yeah, they need to get on track. But you know, after the Tennessee game, running back Brian Robinson, you know, he struggled a bit his first game back. And he talked uh, a day later about being very sore a, the, a day later. And so I was wondering he, if he was going to even play last night. Mm. So if there's any glimmer of hope there from last night's game, Brian Robinson, he looked pretty good last night. Not the superstar we're hoping for at this point. But I think he's going to start, you know, getting into football shape. And I think over the next couple of weeks, he'll get there. And I think that's going to help the offense. I totally agree with you. Last night, um, Brian Robinson, 17 carries, 60 yards, three and a half average on the ground with one touchdown. Great to see. Great to see. Sorry, Reed. Oh, yeah. No, I, I completely agree. Now, of course, last night after the game, uh, one of those things happened uh, with 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 Commanders fans where you can never you know you can never please them. Last night, Ron Rivera, of course, uh, went off on reporters and got sick of it about the Carson Wentz question. Stuck up for his quarterback, stuck up for his team, his new acquisitions. What did you make of that? Did did you like what Rivera said about Carson? Um, I'm kind of neutral on it. You know, uh, there were some people saying they like to see the passion, they love to see the fire in his eyes. There were a few saying this is the, a sign of a desperate man, uh, that they're very concerned about it. Uh, one popular person on social media who's known as Disco said this is a sign of someone that uh, is lost and is very desperate, you know, to roughly paraphrase him. I don't know that I will agree with that. I think this is uh, someone who uh, was very upset about the article that came out earlier in the day. Uh, really saying that Dan Snyder was the one responsible for getting Carson Wentz to come to Washington, whereas Ron Rivera said, no, that's not true. He had a profanity-laden uh, rebuttal to that, as we know, very passionate. And I think, um, I think it shows how much he cares about this team, how much mm -hmm. he cares about these players, and he wants the best for them. That's what I got from it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I completely agree. It's one of those things, too, where it's like last week, people said that he threw Carson under the bus. This week, he sticks up for him. And neither one of the things that he does seems to be good enough for the fans. Uh, so what we need to see happen and shout out to Wiskins for putting this out. We need Dan Snyder to throw Ron under the bus to get folks back onto the Ron wagon, because it seems like <laughs> if that happens, everybody will just be right on Ron's side. So. That's a good point. You're yeah. absolutely right. And last night, the Bears out yards yards outscored them by three 392 yards to the bears altogether for 214 yards compared to the commanders offensively they were putrid in the passing game only 99 yards passing 
is that a Scott Turner issue? Is it a Carson Wentz issue? Is it the offensive line? What are you seeing, Ken? That's a game that happens every so often. I remember a game back in the mid-1980s when Washington played San Francisco. Joe Montana was the quarterback. That's when he was at his peak. And Washington won that game 14-6. to Joe Montana threw for over 440 yards in that game, but they only came away with two field goals. They got a lot of yardage between the 20s, but once they got in the red zone, it didn't happen. Mm. And that game reminded me so much of what, what happened last night. You know, um, Chicago got into the red zone inside the five-yard line, in fact, three times, and each time the defense turned them away. Not even a field goal, but zero points. Mm -hmm. So it reminded me of that game back in the mid-'80s. And these types of games will happen every so often. It's rare. So I don't read much too much into it. These things happen. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right because it's it's really cool because the three stats that are very important are, you know, third down, which Chicago is 5 of 13. So defensively, they're doing a good job in that breath, but they were, like you said, 0 for 3 in the red zone, which is exactly what you want. And then the two turnovers compared to the commander zero, that obviously was a difference in the game. Yeah, but, and the big difference in the game, that tackle by Benjamin St. Juice on Mooney, mm -hmm. right, that, that hit, wow. making sure, that was so impressive. I mean, that literally is a game of inches. That was inches away from being a touchdown. It was incredible. But speaking of the cornerback position, William Jackson the third, of course, didn't play. Reports came out that he's ready to move on from the commanders. He wants a trade. Do you see him suiting up for Washington again, or do you think that's it? He's kind of done here. I think there will be a trade. Um, I saw some people saying, well, they can maybe get a second or third rounder. I don't think I, that's going to happen. I, no, yeah, that's that's happen. Think, yeah. I think, you know, maybe a seventh rounder um, and the team that, you know, does get him. I think uh, Washington will say, well, if you want William Jackson, OK, let's work out a situation where we save some on the salary cap because it is a bit of a big hit. Yeah. But um you know, from day one, he was not a fit in Jack Del Rio's system. I don't know why they signed him. I, I I remember the day it happened. I was thinking, I don't know if this is a really a good idea. He's a very good corner, and um, but he's not a fit in this particular defense. So I think he can go elsewhere and regain his form and play to his style and what he does best. And I think if we can get some good salary cap relief, That'll help us to sign better players next year and maybe even, you know, get that franchise quarterback in the draft or whatever. Although I st I'm still a Carson Wentz fan, just so you know. <laughs> my man, that's I love to hear that. And earlier on Twitter, Ken, I made a tweet saying like my thoughts on uh, Brian Robinson, how he seems like his style of play is similar to Derrick Henry and where early in games, it's not like he's crazy effective, but later on in games, he wears down the defense, is able to really go down your throat like Reed does on a Saturday night. Ah. And, so, and so like with the Ooh, Antonio Gibson, time. Antonio Gibson had five carries for 35 yards and a seven average on the ground. Do you think that they are doing the kind of changing of snaps correctly? Because AG looked explosive in that second half and the Chicago defense was worn out. It's hard to think of Antonio Gibson as a change of pace back, but that's exactly what he could become in this offense. And I think that's what this is style. He did that at Memphis yep. and he came in and um, I think he had what 33 plays his senior season. Uh, um, I think it was 33. I, I, I remember, maybe I'm remembering the wrong number, but he didn't play a whole lot, but when he did play, he was often getting touchdowns, first downs, yeah. ma major yardage, and that's kind of what you saw last night. Now, granted, you know, the AC AAC conference and uh, the group of five football in college is far different than the NFC East right. and uh, the NFL. But, um, you know, you talk about the comparison to Derrick Henry with Brian Robinson, and something struck me after the game when they those two exchanged jerseys. You know, Derrick Henry – Stands about 6'3", goes about 245. And when he was standing next to Brian Robinson, Brian Robinson was, you know, slight, only slightly shorter and built about the same. So they're very similar in that regard. 
And the one difference is Derrick Henry always gets off to a great start in the first half. But in the second half, he tends to wear down somewhat. We saw that, you know, in the Tennessee game. Yeah, Whereas Brian Robinson, he tends to get better as you go along. Mm. And I think that bodes well for the rest of the season. I think we're going to start to see good things from him. Uh, and I'm glad we have a, a 10 days of rest. I think the team needs that. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, and I think we'll get a couple players back, maybe even Chase Young at that point. But I think yeah. he's two games away. That's just my opinion. But maybe, maybe against the Packers, he's back. I know that he has one more doctor's visit. So I look for Brian Robinson and the running game to really take off in these next few weeks. Yeah, it's funny yeah. you say that. I just watched the Ron Rivera press conference from today, and he, they brought up Chase Young the very last question, and he said he has to see Dr. Andrews one more time. And he didn't say when that was going to be, but he said it was going to be soon. So hopefully that happens. And uh, fingers crossed that Chase is healthy enough to come back. Yes. Sorry, Reed. No, oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, one thing you mentioned about Antonio Gibson, though, like we've been saying, I, I feel like the acquisition of Brian Robinson is really only going to help him. Like you said, he's better off in that role where he's not touching the ball every single time. But but you get him down there and you can get him in space and, and allow him to catch the defense and in different packages. He's going to make some big plays for you. And I think we saw that part of the reason we saw some of those big runs from him last night was the offensive line. I know the pass pass protection has not been great but run blocking they really seem to do good I, I mean I think a lot of it has to do with friend of the show Tyler Larson coming back at center I think that that is absolutely huge do you think that they may have found an offensive line unit that they're going to want to roll with for the next few weeks well last night I think this is was what Kirk the sixth combination or something yeah yeah Kirk Herbstreet I think was the one that talked about that last night he said yep. it looks like they have found a combination and I think yeah bingo that's exactly right and I do think uh, Tyler Larson makes all the difference in the world. Obviously, you want Chase Roulier in there, but he may not be back for several more weeks. But, you know, Nick Martin, you know, he's overmatched in there, uh, in all honesty. It's nice to have him now as a depth piece. Uh, I didn't know how Tyler, Lar Tyler Larson would hold up last night. This is the first game back. Yep. But I think he did a very good job. Agreed. He wasn't overpowering. He was he wasn't, you know, someone that stood out, you know, overly so. But I think he did a good enough job, and I think it made a difference on the entire offensive line. You look at the guard play, you know, uh, Norwell and um, Sadiq. Sadiq Charles. Uh, I think they were better just because of the presence of Tyler Larson. 100% agree. And you kind of saw that week one, too, with uh, with Roy yes. in there. Like, both offensive guards played fantastic. The offensive line as a whole played well. Ever since then, it's kind of been downhill. But when they got a good center in there, it, uh, it works you never out. Know. Yeah, you're right. It, oh. it makes the guards look better. I thought Norwell uh, was – Pre Night and day and from the he, previous four or five weeks, right? Um, Pro yes. Football Focus came out and said that he had an 81.1, .1, uh, which was mm. one of the top three highest on the commanders. So Damn. that's good for Norwell, you know, because he yeah. got piled on last week like Rivera uh, on Twitter and social media. But, Ken, to wrap this up, only a, qu a couple more questions for you. The commander's defensive line has been swarming the past couple of weeks. Ten sacks the last two games. Is this something that's starting to become a consistent trend, or is this something just based on the two matchups? It might be just a bit premature to say that it's a trend. I think it's a good idea what could be. But, you know, the next game is against the Green Bay Packers, and we know who the quarterback is. So let's see what happens. In. Now, last year we played the Packers. The defensive line gave him some troubles, and I think they can still do the same thing. If they do well against the Packers, win or lose, I think you'll, you can say, yeah, the defensive line is back. Um I think part of the success uh, over these last couple of games is a young player by the name of John Ridgway. You mm -hmm. know, he is not someone who is going to, you know, be uh, in the offensive backfield all that much. He's a space eater. He takes up, you know, double teams in blocking. He's a big guy. He's strong. But, you know, if he can free up, you know, Montez Sweat, uh, Effie Obata, uh, Deron Payne even coming from the middle. Yeah, these guys are going to feast, you know, especially with Ridgeway in there. And I think that's a guy that's helping to make a difference. 
to wholeheartedly agree. Now, next one I have for you. Are you concerned about Carson Wentz's injury? Because originally it was the shoulder from last week, but he was still playing in the short week. And then during the game, his finger got banged up. And then they were seen taping his ankle after he tried to do that one juke move to the inside. It looked like his ankle bent in a weird way. Are you concerned about that injury? Well, yes, Nick. He's going to see a doctor here soon. And I think having a few extra days off, you know, 10 days before the Packers game is certainly going to help him. Um, it helps to have Taylor Heineke on the bench. And, of course, you have Sam Howell. Everybody wants him in there right now. Right. But I, um, let's see what the doctor has to say. I think it is right now something to be as concerned about. We've heard about, you know, injuries that seem minor to other players. Then all of a sudden we learn that that player could be out quite quite a bit of time. You know, when Chase really had an injury, you know, initially everybody thought he'd be out a week or two, but we learned that he could be out, you know, six or eight games, maybe more. He could be lost for the season. That That's still to be determined. So we'll have to wait and see what uh, it transpires this coming week. Yeah, last one I have for you. A lot of the talk amongst the fan base and social media is, should they be losing games for a higher draft position in week six, or should they be continuing to win games? Ken, what side of the fence are you on? I'm neutral. Can I take both sides? Yeah, you can. I I understand what you mean by that. Um, You're happy about a win, but you also understand the silver lining of the loss. You know, here, um, last week after the Tennessee loss, you know, I, I did put it out there. I said, maybe this team should be thinking about draft choices. And I had my mock draft. I have a mock draft every two weeks at Rigo's Rag. And uh, I have another one coming up week after next. But uh, the mock I had this week um, had us picking rather early. I didn't specify where in the round, but I said, you know, they're going to be able to trade down in round one, get extra picks. But... Um, so I put it out there. The next thing you know, I lost about 10 followers saying, you know, people didn't say that, but I got the idea that they didn't like the idea of, you know, taking the side of, you know, quitting, laying down and all that. But I can see both sides of the argument. Personally, I want the team just to keep trying as hard as they can. You know, when I look at uh, the player that we got in the first round this past year, 16th overall pick, pick. And that's Jahan Dotson, one of the best rookie receivers yep. in the game today. I know he's out a couple of games. I think he's back for the Packers game. But you know what? There's great players to be found in each round. Look where we found Cam Curl. Look exactly. where we found Derrick Henry. Look where we found Brian Robinson. So, I mean, these good players are all over the place. And I think this staff, is a little bit better at picking players the last couple of years than a lot of people on social media have been talking about. Thank you. And and just yes. earlier today, I talked about Benjamin St. Juice. And I yes. said, oh, by the way, and I, and I referenced and I had a video of that play, that game-saving touchdown or I'm uh, game-saving tackle, I should say. And I said, oh, by the way, He's a Ron Rivera pick. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I knew what you meant by that. That was yeah. funny, and people want to give you crap about that, man. It's, well, you, you know, I, I, look, I have like 30 retweets from that and about 25 uh, quote t- tweets and around 250 likes. And so five or six people, you know, take an issue with it. Uh, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I think, I think you won yeah. for the day, Ken. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't thank you enough for joining us yes, again, sir. brother. It's always a joy to be able to talk some ball with you, especially after a win. That was phenomenal. But I think the best thing about today was being able to see you walk with that walker there, sir. Uh, I can't thank you for your time. I know you uh, have your own things going on, and you work really hard to cover this team, and you're passionate about it, and you care about it. And I always appreciate your time, Absolutely. sir. Absolutely. Excited I for those mock drafts, that. Ken. I, yeah, I'll have more. You know, I got them out there every two weeks yep, now. I'm, I'm pumped for them. I look forward to them. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. All right, everybody. Thanks, Ken. You have a good night, brother. Appreciate you. All right. Take All right, care. See you, Ken. See Enjoy you your Friday. You too. Uh, all right, everybody. We just talked to the man, Mr. Ken Johansson of Rigo's Rag. The GOAT. The greatest of all time. Yeah. Dude, abs- I I just enjoy He's- listening to him talk because it kind of gives you a different perspective than what we normally uh, typically listen to. Oh, yeah. But 
Go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to say before we get into our next guest, if you wanted to do game beers and chores. Oh, yeah, we can do that. All right, so let's do game beers real quick, brother. So, obviously, it's a weird kind of game because they won 12-7. to 7. Everyone's complaining about how bad of a game it was. Look, if you're a fan of old school football and you wanted to see what football was like back in 1947, that's the game for you, man. And I was hyped up. I loved it. I absolutely yeah. loved it. It was defensive. We were Justin Fields was laying on the ground like a fish. It looked like RG three esque. No disrespect to Justin. I don't want him to get hurt. I'm just saying it was cool to see the defensive dominance. You know what I'm saying? And so the twelve to seven, I want to get your game. What do you want to do first? We should probably do chores first, right? Let's start off on bad and on good. Yeah, that sounds that sounds all right. To all me. right. So who's getting yeah. your chores? Mm. Who's getting my chores? See, this is kind of tough because it's like even the players that didn't do too good if they still like Carson contributed to a win for us like I mean but you know what I'm gonna go Carson and I don't even necessarily think that it's 100% on Carson that we didn't do too well but I mean 99 yards passing uh, I know he had like Curtis Samuel had that huge drop that could have went for a touchdown uh, it's not really necessarily on Carson and plus he did some things we wouldn't have won the game if it wasn't for Carson as well but uh yeah, I guess you got to go with Carson. I mean, you just got to be better than that. But shout out to him. I mean, getting his seventh, he's seven and zero on Thursday night football. I mean, the guy's a machine. Even though he only passed for ninety nine yards, you know, he did it very methodical. And uh, there's some plays he would like back. I'm sure, like there is every game. But uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this one to Carson just because we know what he can be when he's on, and he can be a lot better. Yes, and look, Carson was twelve of twenty two for ninety nine yards, had a twenty two point five QBR. Uh, which is just ab- obviously very gross. But the one third down blew my mind where, like, the Bears are showing a zero coverage where they have, like, seven, eight guys on the line of scrimmage. They have enough linemen and uh, blockers in there to, to cover that, but they don't run, like, a quick route off of that. All three routes ran by Terry and Curtis. They were long plays. So, Kurt, like, Carson is just a sitting duck at that point, and I don't know who to blame for that. I like, know. Is right. it like That's the quarterback not things. seeing it? Is it him not being able to adjust that? Because at what point? Because that seems like insanity to me. Is it Scott Turner for calling it? Is it Carson for right. not audibling out of it and making a hot route? Is it like, because you're right, that was so, it was like, why are we doing this? Come on, guys. Yeah, and what's al- going although on? Carson did hit Curtis Samuel deep, he did throw yeah. some good balls, like the one that Cole Turner was great, but he yeah. missed a lot. And so for me, mm-hmm. Carson Wentz is definitely getting chores. So he's getting double duty this week. I'm sorry, Carson. The other is Bobby McCain. Bobby McCain yeah. is missing tackles left and right, and it irks the heck out of me. And I don't want to pick on Bobby. I've picked on Bobby the past two weeks. But look, man, look, Bobby, this but is what I got to do. Bobby was it Boucher. the Justin? Was it the Justin Fields run or the Khalil Herbert run where uh, Bobby McCain was just he was right there he, and he made the most half-assed attempt for a tackle so I've ever was, seen. That was the Justin Fields run. I just yeah. I, already, I just rewatched the uh, the film. Yeah, I'll put it, a film breakdown on Twitter if you guys want to. And go you watch, watch it, it and at you, the Burgundy Zone on Twitter. Yeah, there you go. And you watch it, and you're just like, dude, I could have made that tackle. Just get in front of him, dude. What are you doing? But that was so that was bad. I was thinking about going Bobby McCain as well. And um, then there was another one where Bobby McCain missed the block, uh, missed the tackle, and like dove at David Montgomery's knees. David Montgomery just like went inside of it and had no <laughs> issue at all, and just went and picked up the first down. And then on that long that long run by Khalil Herbert, it's it's messed up because Jamin Davis gets blocked and he gets swung. And so when he gets swung, it forces F.A. Obata to go over top of him, and that's where it cuts off Bobby McCain. So Khalil just steps inside. And so right. it's like if Jamin wasn't fighting as hard as he was and losing that tackle, which he should have wrapped it up already, th- there yeah. wouldn't be a problem. But the missed right. tackles continue to be a thing, and Bobby McCain seems to be somebody who's always sitting at the center of that. And now yeah. we are joined by our new uh, guest, Mr. Andrew Andy Lockhart in the U.K. How are you doing, brother? Oh, Hi, how you doing, guys? I'm good. How are you doing? A lot doing better right. now that you're here, all the way from the UK. Yeah, and I wanted to talk to you because um, you obviously, you guys in the UK, obviously, the time difference. If you live on this planet, understand that you guys were up at 1:30 in the morning to watch the start of that game. It wasn't the end; that was the start. So, how was that game? Did you were you able to make it through the game, and was it worth it? Uh, well, I made I made it through the game. Yeah, sure. You know, a few cans of Red Bull always good. You know. Um, <laughs> But uh, but but was it worth it? Hmm. Now that's a question. <laughs> My man. Uh, well, how about uh, that? Was it worth it seeing that block from Carson Wentz on Roquan Smith? Dude, that, that was pretty beautiful. impressive. That was yeah, yeah. yeah. That was that was amazing. <laughs> Dude, Andy oh, and Andy yeah, had a question that. in our Discord chat server earlier, and I asked for fan questions, and he said, "Yeah, could Carson Wentz play guard?" 
based on the way he's been blocking. He's like, dude, you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah. But Andy, we are, uh, we're we're doing our game beers and giving out chores. We haven't given out our game beers yet, but we did okay. give out our chores. And we uh, I gave mine to Bobby McCain and Carson Wentz, and Mike Reed gave his to uh, Carson, Carson Wentz. Wentz as well. So who's getting your chores for the week? Who's somebody that played poorly, that deserves to go back to work, that get better and work on their craft? Well, yeah, I mean, it's always on the quarterback, isn't it? So, right. so, so went went as one for sure. Um, uh, and to be it's fair, tough I mean, this week, it's yeah, really hard this week because like nobody deserves really much of anything, but at the same yeah. time, like we I mean, did win. You could choose all the offense really. <laughs> Curtis That's Samuel, true. yeah, they should have done a lot better than what they did. Curtis yeah. Samuel, yeah. two receptions for six yards yeah. on five so- targets. Some poor drops there as well. Yeah, yeah. especially that one of his drops could have been a touchdown. So yeah. definitely, and I, I absolutely love that. But what about game beers, Andy? Let's just do one each. We could do two if we want to do the round. But just in case we're not overlapping, Reed, like usual. Yeah, you picked who's, my guy. Who's, so. who's getting your game beer today? Oh, or me? Oh, Andy. Sorry. Oh, my okay. bad. oh sorry, me. So, um, uh. I think it, you can always go on, on the line of the D line, um, and I think I think Ridgeway needs a, needs, needs a mention really because okay. he allowed um, he played a really good game uh, playing those, and he helped um, Allen and Payne to kind of get open a bit easier, a bit more freely. So, which obviously ends up in a few sacks for us tonight. So, well, yesterday, yesterday, sorry. So yeah, so it was. Uh, I'm going to give it to Ridgeway. Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm going to keep it on the defensive line. I'm going to go Jonathan Allen. Jonathan Allen getting his first interception, going in a dude. Yeah, mainly, mainly his. He gets a game beer for the fact that when he threw that ball to his wife to to keep oh, his yeah. first ever interception ball, he threw that right over these kids' outstretched arms that were reaching for it, and it was just a dime. <laughs> if we could get him back there playing quarterback at that point, I'm okay with that. But you know, no, shout I, out to Jonathan Allen. The I whole called, D-line, really. Yeah, I called that an interception. If you go, it was uh, honestly it was crazy. I was just feeling it at the time. I, I tweeted, I was like, pick six. And then literally 30 seconds later, the pick happens. I'm like, okay, I'm cool with that. You know, mm-hmm. so I was like, I, I brought that on. And some dude commented, he was like, well, why can't you wish for more Terry catches? I was like, look, he's on my fantasy team. I can't do that, all right? But somebody who's getting my game beer, Montez Sweat, six tackles, one sack, two for loss, and four and quarterback on hair. hits. He's been absolutely. And it. then, obviously, Duran uh, – so I'm not going to get to the next one. No, go ahead, yeah, go ahead. Montez Sweat absolutely has just been on fire recently. I mean, hopefully that continues because this is what we've been expecting out of Montez Sweat. Looked like he wasn't getting started early. But the last two weeks, he has been on a tear, man. So, yeah. Andy, who's another person that's getting your game beer if you have one? Yeah, Cam Curl. My man. Yeah. He had one set, five absolute. tackles and one sack. My man. Absolutely yeah. beast, man. He's so good. I mean, you think he's rated number one, I think, at the moment. In, mm-hmm. uh, As a safety. A safety position. So, yeah, I mean, unbelievable. Um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for me, me, yeah. I'm not sure if he drinks because I'm pretty sure he's Mormon. I'm not 100% <laughs> sure. But my man, Tyler Larson. Coming in, he's he's been injured since, what, late last season, worked his way back, was on short-term IR, gets elevated recently, comes right up when we need him the most, and it looked like progression there. The offense looked normal, you could say, to an extent, uh, even though they weren't productive in a sense. But yeah. the offensive line looked better. They only gave up three sacks. So game beer uh, to my man Tyler Larson working his butt off to get back and produce well in his first game back. That's hard to do. Oh, yeah, yeah, it did. Look, he, he looked a million times better than uh, what we've seen for the, since Chase Royer got hurt. So shout out to Tyler Larson, Larson, friend of the show. I'm going to keep it on the offense, and uh, I'm going to go with Brian Robinson. I mean, how can you not with everything that he's been through? I know last week was his first week back, but he really started to get going there in that second half. And then, of course, the game-winning touchdown, which was also his first touchdown in the NFL. Shout out to Brian Robinson. And I'm just going to throw somebody else in there because I don't know if we're done. Uh, Benjamin St. Juice, yeah. strictly for – that play at the end of the game that that was literally that was closer than the Titans Rams Super Bowl like this was you're literally talking about like that much of the ball that was that close to going in and it would have been in if he would have caught it at first but uh, Benjamin St. Juice shout out to him excellently timed hit excellently placed and uh, made him bobble it and come down with it just outside of the goal line for the W otherwise We'd be having a different feeling here on a Friday morning, oh Friday afternoon. Goodness. Yeah, Friday after evening. that fields run, I was just like, what is going on? What is this? Why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Like, the, like the one area of their team is like not good at like passing, right? Deep downfield. Obviously, they did that against Kendall Fuller. You can make jokes. But it's like that's not their strength, right? It's just the fields running the football. That's their strength. 
And so it's like that one area, that one time where passing the football is where you're like, I feel good about the situation. They run it all the way down to the goal line. It's just why that was, yeah. <laughs> I remember texting my dad cause he couldn't watch it. And I was like, Oh, don't worry. Like they, they muffed the punt. We got a touchdown. Like we're good. We, we got it. They got to throw the ball. There's not much time left. We can, we can pull this out. And then I was like, and never mind. Justin Fields just ran it down to the six. And right. it's one of those games. So. Um, honorable mention though. I just wanted to say uh coach Rivera. Uh, he did. I do find issue with the 12 men being on the field that the penalties continue to be an issue. So hopefully they can clean that up uh, because either they had too many men on the field or they didn't have enough. That's not good. Uh, kind of stuff and then there were either plate- way right yeah so i i, yeah, I want to give a honorable mention because coach Rivera did receive the game ball from jonathan allen which i thought was honestly was really cool because yeah, of like if you of kind of Bears. read the situation you know ron Rivera is he's picked up about he's this not. stuff you know oh and, yeah 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 and so jonathan doing that really shows that the players are for ron and so I, that was really cool but the penalties got to get fixed up, man. I'm, I'm just yeah. being honest here. No, they do. And it's crazy because the penalties weren't an issue for the first three right. games of the season. All of a sudden, the last three games, it's been like, what the hell is going on? And it's not it's not only just like they've had so many of them, like they had 11 two weeks ago, but like it's just like the timing of a lot of these penalties. It's like you got to be smarter than that. You got to you got to have better control over that. And some of it doesn't even come down on the coach. I mean, you're right. The 12, 10 players, whatever it was that comes down on the coach, but like some of them, it's just like stupid fucking false right. starts and stupid holdings. And it's just, it's written hands to the face. And it's like, you guys it's gotta be better, but that's gotta fall on somebody. Unfortunately, that is the coach. Cause it comes down to discipline. So you're absolutely right. Yeah. And- oh, sorry. Go no, 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 Andy, go. No, sorry. I'm um, just, uh, just the, I think the reason why Ron really got the game ball was because this is the very first time he's actually won as a head coach in Chicago. Yeah. He obviously is, um, no, it's former bear, former yeah. player. Yeah, so you know, I think that was the main reason why he got it more than his coaching, shall we call yeah. it? Oh, I yeah, know. it was more of a respect thing. <laughs> I yeah. Would, yeah, but yeah. I would say, like, if it was like a normal week, I would say Leno would probably be getting that just because him coming back to Chicago getting the W. But I feel like there was something more to it. Is all I'm saying is why. And I feel like, it. and I feel like the team was also like, we're not giving it to an offensive lineman with what they've done the last five weeks. So. <laughs> yeah, Twitter would have went crazy yeah. over that. My goodness, uh, Andy, to wrap this up, sir. Um, I would like obviously I got was over here with you. Um, when you were visiting from the UK with Andy and the guys, and so Andy wanted me to ask you uh, how long you guys had to wait for Scott Hartley in the bathroom. <laughs> Ridiculous, man. <laughs> what did he call him? He called him Scott. He called him Scott bit, 12 poops, uh, Hartley. Oh, 100%. 100% Sometimes, yeah. man. It's night. No, Continental dude, change. I'll tell you, know. you, me, Andy, and then the other Andy, Andy Burroughs, do we cleaned up on the pool table, dude. Absolutely cleaned up. Nobody could even compete with us. At it's first, true. we were going against Lockhart, and then Lockhart and I joined forces, and we and we just whooped everyone's butt. Nobody had even had a chance. Just smashed everybody. You English, sure. man. You guys are good with a stick in your hands, huh? Oh, I, of course. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> sometimes. Andy, but to wrap this up, um, I know because we're in the Discord chat server, so we get to hear from you a lot. And I know mm-hmm. that it kind of things are bleak at the moment, you could say, to an extent. But how are you feeling about this team, brother? Uh, how long have you been a fan? And then just let us know how you're feeling at the moment. Just get your air off their chest. Yeah, yeah, I mean... Uh, Don't be afraid I, to be I, as I harsh mean, as you want. <laughs> oh, I might be, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, was, um, so, yeah, so I've been a fan from... I was about 10, really, 10 years old. I'm 38 wow. now, so... Um, Damn. Um, got into it through my brother, really. My brother's a bit older than myself, and he... he um, Became a Washington fan in the early 80s, obviously, when we were pretty good. Uh, so, <laughs> so he thought, oh, yeah, I'll, 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 um, I'll bring him up to be a Redskins fan at the time. And and then, obviously, it's, it's stuck with me. But, yeah, thanks for that, bro. You know. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 his yeah. That was still a nightmare. Um, yeah, so, but, um, yeah, you know, there's, there's, there's peaks and troughs in every season, isn't there, you know. Um, I think this season, you know, it's uh, it is what it is. I mean, I'm I'm just really happy that we actually won when when we came over, you know, because I'd have been pretty poor if we had right. Yeah. That, um, what a what a time for them to actually show up. I know, I know. Right. Yeah, so they, they must have known. You, know, you guys, that, yeah, yeah. You guys wasted Jack, a bunch of money. Somebody must have told them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Doesn't yeah. The you guys wasted money. Like, doesn't Jack's over game feel like loss. three years ago already? Oh, yeah, basically it was yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, and this uh and. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's always some off-field crap going on all the time with Dan. I mean, I can't when 
Can we get rid of him? I mean, you know, I understand the owner and, you know, and everyone's putting the pressure on and now even the NFL from yesterday. So why can't we get rid of this dude? You know, uh, I'm, I'm sick of him, to be honest. Um, and he, he's, just, he's just caused unnecessary kind of, you know, issues that we don't actually need for the playing staff to be kind of even thinking about, you know. And, yeah. and obviously the coaches and Ron, and you can tell Ron's feeling it. And that's why he's snapping at the oh, board yeah. regularly. And, you know, he's not normally like that, you know. Um Personally, I like it. I like one. I like angry one. To be fair, I like yeah. to say because he actually he actually You know what I mean? So yeah, uh, you know, I like that. But uh, but in general, yeah, it's um, yeah, not not impressed with that. And on with the results. I mean, I just hope that this we can use this to kick start and hopefully win a few games in a row. But you know, Green Bay coming up next, and it's going to be pretty tough against uh, Rogers. But. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. Andy, I can't thank you enough for joining us, brother. Um, you're a big supporter of this show. You've been in my backside, on my butt, trying to get in here uh, to be able oh, to wow. interview. And it really means a lot, yeah. dude, because obviously it really, it's really cool that you re- like want to be on here with us. And I really appreciate you reaching out and continuing to press on me uh, and uh, trying to find a slot <laughs> in here for you. But I'm glad that we were able to, to talk uh, some football with you, brother. Uh, thanks, Always appreciate you, man. Yeah. Uh, thanks for having me on as well. And, uh, you know, listen, once, once you've been on here, you've kind of made it a little bit, you know? So, that's true. So, uh, yeah. you know, you kind of tick off that box. So, it's nice. Yeah, yeah. It's really nice. Stop yeah, that, man. Stop that. The legends, part of the legends now. Remember, Andy, yeah. we are just the best secret in Washington. That best kept secret in Washington. That's all. Andy, uh, I don't know. Have you seen Epstein's list? <laughs> no. Andy, have a good night, brother. I appreciate uh, you, you man. Have a good weekend. Get Take some care, rest. Guys, you too. All, all right, Andy. See you. Take right, care, Andy. Bye-bye. Uh-huh. All right, man. We just talked with the man, Mr. Andy Lockhart. I love talking to Andy. I love talking. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm telling you, he's we, always so active. And we so killed cool. it on the pool table. Just yeah. absolutely killed it. I believe it. it. Were you dancing the whole time? I wasn't dancing. I'm not a you dancer. You were dancing man. on the pool table? No, I'm not a dancer. Uh, that's not what I heard. That's not true. That is not. That's, that's not, not true. Actually. No, yeah. But we are, before we are joined by our next guest, let's answer some fan questions, brother. And this one is from the Colonel, as always, supplying us with support and some questions for us. His question is, our defense stepped it up a little last night. I was especially impressed with Benjamin St. Juice stopping that goal line touchdown. As a sophomore player, his situational awareness is uncanny. What other defensive efforts did you guys note that was exceptional, that were exceptional? Oh, I mean, obviously the D line just playing as a whole. I mean, you look at, we talked about Jonathan Ridgeway already, how he's kind of been an unsung hero. Montez Sweat, Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne has been playing out of his mind. Uh, mm-hmm. This is Montez Sweat really the last two weeks. And on top of that, man, I mean, you look at F.A. Obata and Casey Tuhill, who were both, uh, what was, I think they were both top 10, top five going into this week in pass yeah. rush win rate or something, according to PFF. So, I mean, that the, this defensive line the last few weeks, really the defense as a whole for the last like month or so has been playing a lot, but they've been doing more than enough for our offense to get the job done. They just haven't. Luckily, yesterday it didn't really matter because we were facing such a bad, bad Bears team that – maybe even more of a dumpster fire than us in some regards. So yeah. But. What defensive kind of efforts did you guys note that was exceptional? I think Cameron curl. I noted yeah. this on Twitter earlier. There's one play where Cameron curls up near the box and they run a zone read right at Cameron and Cameron has to play a left tackle. A left tackle is coming to block him and he stifles left tackle and blocks him off of his balance and is able to set the edge there, which is absolutely amazing. But we are now joined by our next guest, Mr. Corey Sanchez. Mr. Sanchez, Mr. 36,000, how are you doing on this Friday evening, sir? Well, Mr. 100,000, I'm doing good. How are y'all doing? <laughs> uh, happy Victory Friday. Happy uh, – how, how about the block? How, how, it's blockage day for Carson Wentz. We love it. That's what we love to see. Uh, it's ugly. Like I said, we all know we've dealt with ugly people in our lives all the time. They need love, too. I mean, we, some of us see ugly people every morning in the mirror. If they toothless, if it's all gristle, it's a win. We take it. We celebrate. And we put our left hands up because who are we? We're the commanders. We love it. <laughs> Dude, I love how that has caught on. At first, it was so embarrassing, but it's just funny that the, the joke has gone on. That poor guy, man. That poor guy. But look, his, his name, his face is being put everywhere. But the colonel had a question for us, Corey, about what, besides Benjamin St. Juice, what other defensive efforts did you find exceptional? Um, I, I think the effort of, I, I think the line, because uh, Deron Payne, he's looking to get paid. He's playing really hard right now. Mm-hmm. Jonathan Allen is our best defensive player. He's the most versatile, right? Sacks, interceptions, playing tackles for loss. I mean, yeah. You can play, yeah, the way he's playing a run right now, uh, they took this to task. That whole entire defense 
Um, in the secondary, you know, Cam Curl, since he's been back, he's been playing hard too. Um, I, I think that Rashad Wild Goose had a good yeah. game. I thought they were still mm -hmm. – I, I said on my show Wednesday night, I thought they were still picking remnants of his rear end up from the Philadelphia game at FedEx Field. But he <laughs> came out and played one heck of a game. I said, y'all call him Wild Goose. I called him Cook Goose. I'm going to call him a balanced goose last night. I think he did, he did really well uh, against the Bears. So, uh, yeah, no, there, there's a lot of guys to give credit. In, and I think at the top now, people need to give him his flowers. Jack Del Rio has, right, great. has wrote the yeah. ship on this defense and schemed them up. I don't care what you say. It's night and day from uh, from that Detroit, that Detroit game. Even the Philadelphia game, the defense yeah. played all right. It's just a bad second quarter, so. Yeah, yeah, and, you gotta give it to him. And on top of that, who, what edge defender, what defensive end in the NFL is playing better than Montez Sweat the last two weeks? That we know. I mean, obviously, no teams have played games yet, in this, you know, in, week, in this coming week. But my, my, uh, Montez Sweat's playing this, fantastic. This defensive end named Mike Reed that I know. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. he's really good. He's a he's former better. NFL scout. I heard. Right. So, no, yeah. yeah, he is. Yeah. And he's another under Bill guy, Belichick and Bill Parcells. So another guy that played exceptional. I will say that deserves credit jamin davis he's been playing great he, as of people late. people like love to hate on jamin jamin's been playing very good for the last month or so really ever since that first game when he kind of got called out and the coaching staff said that oh, we thought jamin would be a little better we thought he ever since then man he's been in the right place he's done his job that's really all you can ask from him and he, he's starting to see the plays now he's starting to make good plays on screens and in the run game and getting by blockers so jamin's starting to get this down and if he does get it down completely watch out because like we said man that's why he was picked so high his athleticism these yep. rare traits are something that can really be versatile on a defense like this yeah and this defense getting five sacks last night all together cole um montez sweat cam curl jonathan allen fa obata and deron Payne all getting in there love to see that from this defensive line but Corey, the next question from the colonel is it seems every game we have an opposing running back break a huge run against our defense last night was no exception with chicago's herbert running almost 70 yards before finally getting stopped at the goal line which our defense held is this because of our mediocrity at the linebacker position uh no because if you look back on that uh, it, it was a mediocre moment for the whole defense. You had uh, secondary members. You had defensive linemen who missed them and then let them turn up field. That's not just on the linebackers. That's a whole defensive collapse right there. Uh, the missed tackles, my God. I I, I did. I remember we sat there because I had the game on two screens. So I was watching it, and then I could see the replay up top, which if you watch Thursday Night Crap Football, you should always watch it in that uh, the uh, – Amazon stats version, no other way to watch it. But um, yeah, that was a whole deep. That was the total defense. It's not just the linebacker. I'm not going to put that on Cole and Jamin uh, single and solitarily. That that was a bad defensive play. Uh, yeah. You, you got to fill in the lanes. Uh, you got to disengage from those uh, blockers and everything. And you got to make this stop. That, that was on the whole defense, not just the linebackers. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Uh, it, I kind of talked about it earlier because it was unfortunate. Jamin was trying to tackle Herbert at the same time that he was like getting off of a block. So his body was getting swung, which made F.A. about to move out the way north, which allowed the cutback for Khalil Herbert. And then F.A. being out of the position blocked Bobby mm. McCain from being able to get to Khalil Herbert. which allowed like Bobby McCain would have done anything anyway. We right. saw yeah, that Bobby Justin McCain, Fields run. <laughs> Bobby McCain, in his, way. his middle name is failure. Like, that's yeah. all. Bobby <laughs> McCain gets up in the morning. It's like, how am I going to screw up? That's what he looks yeah. at in the mirror. It's like, how am I going to mess this defense right. up? Right. Oh, oh right. by the usually way, real the fast. Plays, he's usually been at the I just, I just, I just thought of somebody else that did Derek Forrest, the, uh, when he broke up the pass to Pettis right before the mm -hmm. one to Mooney, that was incredible too. He, he put his body on the line. He knew he was going to get hurt. He said, Nope, got to break this up. That was a hell of a throw by Justin Fields. I didn't think Pettis had a chance to get to it, but he did. And Derek Forrest, man, shout out to him. That yeah. Everybody it kind of got overshadowed by Benjamin St. Juice, but that was a hell of a play too. Yeah. And Corey, I know you got to get out of here. Uh, Cause it seems like you're like a uh, geese hunting out there. Or something. I hear some <laughs> duck calls. Something going on. I think on that was my there. son. That was James. That was it the really? Going, yeah. I, thought, I thought it was Corey started, the whole time. He, he started going, Hey, ah, I'm in the country. Ah, it doesn't mean I'm ah. <laughs> That's very stereotypical of you, Kyle. I'm very ashamed. Just yeah, I'm what? in the South don't mean we have duck calls all the time. Right. Uh, Come I on, thought man. you were at a football game. I thought you were up in the booth or something. I thought he was oh, at like Oregon, the I'm Ducks. What are you. <laughs> I'm at. Uh, I get to see a, a current NFL player tonight. Uh, James Mitchell who's at Virginia Tech. They're retiring his number here. Oh, um, and so, yeah, yeah, he's tied in. Yeah. yeah. 
So we who's he playing him. for right now? Yeah, he's playing for Detroit. Uh, okay, and he's fine. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Dude, Detroit yeah. got a lot of good young players this draft, man. They I mean, did. you look at Malcolm Rodriguez, Rodrigo, the star of Hard Knocks. I mean, last question I have for you uh, from the Discord chat server, Corey, before we let you get uh, out of here. I want to get your opinion on this because you usually have a good, balanced mindset with this sort of thing. This question is from Orange Crush 92 in the Discord chat server. Yeah. Is walking out of press conferences after games okay, or should a, a coach be more disciplined and set a better example? Ron Rivera's a human being. He's going to get mad. He's going to get pissed off. Like, like if somebody's coming for your job, uh, whether I agree or disagree on how he handles it, um, it doesn't matter. Yeah, sometimes you have to walk out of a press conference. And I think how he did it was probably the best you could do. He could have thrown something. He said, you know what? He showed a maturity to be like, hey, uh, this is going the wrong way. He's like, I'm sorry. I got to go. Now, it makes for people, trolls like me, We I find it hilarious. But that's the right thing, what he did, because, you know, I said I, I was feeling like Ron. I, I mean, Ron got so mad he was cross-eyed last night. You can see it. So I think he – um That's I a different level of angry. He was just like, mad like, and going cross-eyed, yeah. He was just like this. He was like one one way was looking at Carolina, one way was looking at Chicago, and the other way was looking at Washington. So it, <laughs> he was like, so mad that one of his eyes started making its own rules. It was yeah, like, yeah. It's not yeah. cool, man. <laughs> his left eye is called Chico. Shout out yeah. to Coach. We love Coach. Yeah. We love Coach. Coach Rivera, Seabiscuit though. Rivera. <laughs> yeah. That is hysterical. Absolutely hysterical. <laughs> Uh, like, I agree with you, Corey. That was my sentiment, really, uh, in saying that, you know, he is human. It's cool to see transparency because a lot of times, like Bill Belichick, they'll be robots, you know. So, mm -hmm. you, But you can also see a that. A lot of times Ron is. But you can also see from, like, Orange Crush's point of view of saying, like, you are the example for the team and being able to be strong and regardless of what's being thrown in your face and everything like yeah. that. And so I understand from that mindset that Ron does have to be a better leader in that breath. But he, like you said, to an extent, he's human. You know, you can't expect, like, I understand that, but people make mistakes, and in the moment, I'm sure he was flustered and was pissed off, but that being said, that's still a bad look because it sends that you're getting shook, right? And as yeah. a leader, that shouldn't be something that is, that goes in line with my problem with what Jamal told us last week when Rivera said, I don't know about the direction right. of the team. Like, you don't want to show that kind yeah. of weakness. I'm not going to, like, he, he survived cancer. I'm not going to say he's weak. But, like, the, that kind of weakness, chicken yeah. the oh, armor type. Like, you're unsure about things. Oh. Oh. But, hey, before before you guys even say this, uh, before before you let me go, I the, the thing about Ron is I want sane energy. I don't want this, like, he always he's telling he tries to tell people how to feel about the vision of the plan. Don't worry about that. F the noise, Ron. Go out there and just win ball games. Win ball games. Go out there and execute. And that's what this team has not been doing. They we haven't been executing. And then you're backtracking. You're making excuses. We know what you tried to say. We know what it sounds like. Don't give people a shadow of a doubt because that's more. Because I was watching ESPN today, and that overshadowed the fact that we had just ended a four-game winning streak was him getting upset. I, I understand it. I'll defend him on it. But you've got to keep that same energy. Win, loss, indifferent, tie, it does not matter. Go out to keep the same damn energy. And it, it's on the Green Bay now. I, whole, and don't worry. Yeah. I wholeheartedly agree with you. You just convinced me the way that you broke that down is exactly right. And was like my initial thought, but like I pushed it away because of the human thing. But you're right. Just don't worry about the noise at, at this point. And I think that's what Orange Crush's point was saying earlier that like he lost a simple grand view, um, a macro yeah. view of everything. And obviously he's human, but that's what happened. And you're right. Yeah. Uh, just the my thing is I kind of, I mean, I completely understand what you guys are saying. Yes, Ron does need to keep his cool, kind of put things in perspective. But I kind of, I like that he did, honestly. To me, it's kind of similar to the Jason Wright thing, where Jason Wright stood, stood up for Carson Wentz this summer when reporters right. were asking him stuff. It's like, Ron is just hears us all the time, and it's not true to him. I mean, at least that's what he's saying. And right. I get why it would be frustrating, man. I, I'd be pissed off about it, too. Did he handle it right? Probably not. But at the same time, I'm sure that his guys appreciated it. I'm sure that Carson appreciated it. Being like, hey, thank you for going out there making an ass out of yourself. And uh, <laughs> right. just stick up for me, man. I, I appreciate that. So I... I don't have a problem with it i like it to me it's one of those things where you're never gonna fans are gonna be pissed no matter what he throw, he says something that people interpret as throwing carson under the bus then it's ron ron's bad he does something like this where he sticks up for carson it's like ron's bad it's one of those things where he can never win uh and that's 
like we talked about with Wiskins. Wiskins Skin said the only way teams are going to fans are going to get back on Ron's side is if Dan Snyder throws Ron under the bus because then everybody's going to be like, "Who are you? What are you doing that yeah. for?" Ron You're, didn't dude, do anything. It's a genius wrong. move, honestly. and it's true. That's the only way fans are going to get all the way back on Ron's side. So. Absolutely, Corey. I can't thank you enough for your time, brother. I know you're busy tonight, but glad to be able to talk some ball with you. Talk this victory Friday. We don't get these uh, very often, so we got to celebrate it. But before you get out of here, we'd just like to plug your social media handle and your show uh, on the Warpath for uh, people to check out. Just in case they're not watching, but you know you're Mister Thirty Six Thousand, so obviously they oh, probably already God. are. Man, next time I'm going to like I'm going to choke hold you the next time I see. You. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's on the Warpath Sanchez Four Hundred Five. I uh, just hit three thousand on the YouTube. I'm uh, not thirty six thousand, as Kyle likes to put. But um, Mondays, the new show on Monday is the Monday After Pill. We talk about what happened. Uh, going to have that on on Monday, so uh, make sure y'all pull up. Uh, that's usually about six. 30 Eastern time, right before Monday night football. And, uh, you know, Hey, we, we're in this together. We got to keep our left hands up. Who are we? Hold on. Wait a minute. Commanders. Yeah. Commanders. I love he had that planned <laughs> yeah. out. That's awesome. Corey, have a good night, brother. I appreciate it. All right, Corey. Of course, man. I always appreciate we'll your time, Corey. I love Corey. Go. His one liners dude are up there with like Robert Griffin, the third. I know. Little known fact, Corey's busy tonight because he's an escort. And uh, he is filming an OnlyFans video with Logan Paulson. Mm. They're both on OnlyFans. Are yeah. you sure about that? Uh, no, but I think so. All right, but let's get back to our fan questions to wrap up this episode, everybody. This one's from Big Tony Shivers. Who would you like to see a punt returner instead of Dax Randall L? <laughs> that's a good. That's a good question. Uh, shit i still i mean i look I, i'm all right with dax back there at still at times i mean punt returners they have these they, they have their moments i guess but uh you're right it hasn't been too pretty however i'm still down to see Jahan dotson do it every once in a while not too often but but when we need a big one uh like we heard all off season i, I would be down for john dotson to do some but other than that man i don't know i mean maybe you could also i don't know how you you know what i'm down to give gibson some some too as soon as Brian Robinson's taking a majority of the carries. And as soon as that's kind of established, uh, I would love to see us get the ball in Antonio Gibson's hands any ways we can, because that dude's such a big play waiting to happen when he's using that role. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure about Gibby because Gibby obviously on kick return is obviously essential. His one kick return he got for 27 yeah, yards, right. which is better what we've seen mm -hmm. uh, to your point with Dax Mill. And it does Dax Mill does bring that safety, that comfortability of being able to catch the ball first. And that's, what's most important. I understand that you want to be a weapon and attack with your punt returner, but sometimes that just, you know, giving coughing up the football, is that really worth it? Hey man, look, look what happened last night. Exactly. And that's the kind of point He's a that big goes play into waiting it. to happen. And that, but that being said, Danny Johnson, they called up yesterday before the game uh, because sure. William Jackson didn't travel with the team. So Danny Johnson is somebody that could possibly be a punt returner. But I like the comfortability of the hands. But I understand why you want explosion out of that returner rather than just safety and comfortability. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, Tony's next question. Thoughts on the rotational D-line play? Obata with the big sack and pressure throughout the game. I think it was Smith-Williams with the batted pass in the red zone at the end of the game. Seems to be making low-key impact plays as of late. Yeah, like we talked about, man. I, I love that. I love Obata, Tuhill, James Smith-Williams. Uh, I think they've been doing a fantastic job. And to add on to that, Jonathan Ridgeway, he looked yeah. very good last night as well. Uh, like we said, didn't make the splash plays, but did his job. The defensive line didn't drop off with those guys in there, and that's really all you can ask for when – your defensive line is, good, is as good as they are with Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, Montez Sweat, and then when Chase comes back, I mean, it's just going to add to this rotation, man, and I'm very excited about the steel line moving forward. Finally, they've been playing up to their potential for the last few weeks. Yeah, F.A. Bada looked really dominant at times. Uh, really excited about the D-line because they're more injured than ever, and they've had to go get John Ridgeway off the practice squad of the Cowboys and plug him. He's starting and not, not the starting, but he's contributing he's and doing role, right? and doing well at that. And so it's really cool to see that happening with this defensive line during this injury riddled. They left, they got rid of Matt Ioannidis. They don't have Tim Settle lost him to Buffalo. The fact that this is coming around is a really, really good sign for this team, this defense. I absolutely loved it. But the next question we have is from Tim, uh, Tim Towner on the discord chat server. Reed, if you were Ron Rivera, would you bring in an outside consultant to review the offense and have them provide input as to where the issues are? Scott and Carson are not not only on the same page, they're not even in the same book, he says. Yeah, I mean, I, that's 100% true. I feel like one of them is writing books and one of them's in magazines. You know, it's completely different. Uh, 
Yeah, I think at, at some point, I mean, I know that they've invested a lot into Scott Turner, but I mean, Tim, and you always bring up good points. I, I think that that's some, definitely something that they need to look at because as I've been saying, I know that Carson Wentz is up and down. You kind of take the identity of your quarterback, but there's too much talent on this offense to be wasted like this. It seems like every week something is going down and it's not just, it's either Carson making bad decisions, the offensive line not playing up to standard or the play calling just completely. Like you talked about Kyle, there was that one play where there was about eight, nine men in the box and uh it was third down and the wide receivers are going out running deep routes when they could have just ran, ran something quick. They're all smaller, speedy wide receivers that are shifty and uh, they could have definitely picked up some yardage, but they didn't. And I don't know if that's on play calling. I don't know if that is on Carson, not calling a hot route. I don't know if what, what that's on, but something needs to give something needs to be fixed or else this offense is going to be in shambles for the rest of the season. Yeah. I don't think they need to contact a consultant to be perfectly honest with you, because North Turner is obviously a phone call text message away at any point in time. And that being said, like, this is the problem with the offense at the moment, right? Is they got Carson Wentz and brought him in here. Carson Wentz needs good O-line play, but the injuries derailed that. So now the offense is inept because the offensive line is not good enough to be able to make Carson productive in what he needs around him. So, but you adjust to the quick game to get the ball out of his hands quick to help the offensive line and Carson. But Carson isn't good at that. So the offensive line cannot hold blocks long enough for Carson to be effective. But Carson cannot be effective at the short yardage game to help out the O-line. So that's the rock and the hard place of the offense. And Scott Turner, a lot of people have been harping about Terry McLaurin. He's calling plays like you saw last night to get Terry McLaurin working early, trying to get the ball to him. But a lot of times... There's issues with Carson's decision-making. He's only reading one side of the field, staring receivers down. And then there's other times where Curtis Samuel drops the ball. So I don't think that it is a consulting issue. It's not like they're not creative. They're not moving them around in ways and trying to make them effective. They're doing that. He called a play-action rollout to isolate one side of the field for Carson, make it easier on him. And he threw it behind Antonio Gibson. It should have been picked. And so it's... I don't think it's needed a consultant. I just think guys just need to be playing better, and I don't know how much his inj- Carson's injuries had to do with it. But I think that they're fine with what they're doing. They just have to find a click. They have to actually execute. Yeah, they have to yeah. find the effectiveness, the production. And I think Tyler Larson coming back That's kind fair. of helped that with that power running game late in that game like oh, we yeah, talked for about. Sure. Yeah, like we talked about, Tyler Larson made a huge impact. Uh, yeah, and, and Antonio Gibson too, 75, uh, 35 yeah. yards, seven uh, average on the ground, which is absolutely awesome. Yeah. Um, but all right, guys, that's going to wrap us up for this episode. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, everybody. Tony, Orange Crush, Tim Towner, you guys are the best. I really appreciate you. Colonel, of course, as always. And then being able to talk to Corey, Andy Lockhart from the UK, and Ken Johansson. This was a friendly episode, fan-based, and I really appreciate everyone's time being able to come on here. If you've made it this far, you're you're a trooper, man. You are an absolute hero, uh, probably because you made it through that game last night as well. But the fact is you're still here, and even listening to us uh, idiots talk about this game, I really do appreciate you guys and contributing and supporting us. It really means a lot. Yeah, no, I just make up 95% of what I say. So. Yeah, that makes sense, dude. What, yeah. hey, real quick, what did you think of Cole Turner's uh, first game? Dude, I, I liked it. Uh, you definitely saw what he could bring on that that one catch. Uh, when was that first, second quarter when uh, we, were, we were down? Was that the only catch he had? No, he had two catches. He had two catches. Okay, he only yeah, had the two one targets. Where he, the one where he extended, uh, kind of diving forward with a ball that was a little high and away from Carson, but it was still it was kind of where the ball. Yeah, it was a perfect was, play call by Scott. Uh, they yeah. did a play action, and so the linebackers mm-hmm. jumped up, which created the throwing lane for uh, yeah. for Cole Turner. And the offensive line blocked well on that play yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was excellent. I, I'd love to see Cole Turner get more involved, man. I'm really excited about what this kid can do. I think that. Having somebody like him, we know Carson loves his tight ends. We know Carson loves his big targets. If it, Not if as you much really, as you, though. Nobody likes big things as much as that. Tight ends. Uh, well, sometimes they got to be a little more loose. You tight know ends and big things. That's the read yeah, way. That's the old, that's my way. Um, I, I really think Carson, uh, Carson, I really think Cole Turner could really solve a lot for this offense, uh, just being who he is, just with his skill set and his, his physicality and his physical profile and his attributes. I really think that he could he could make a big difference. Um, so I, I would love to see him get more involved. Yeah, and so basically with my explanation earlier about the offense, and that's why like I, I don't want to put too much blame on Carson, but I don't want a lot of the blame going on Scott Turner because when they adjust, the other one can't do it. And so they have to find a, a happy medium, and that's hard to do. And it's not like the offensive line is going to get healthy overnight. And the easiest way to be able to get more production out of that group is if Carson plays better and is able to be more accurate, is able to do the quick game better, then this offense will be better. 
So that's why I expect it more out of Carson that might be too cruel in a way because of the situation he's in with this offensive line. But look, I, I, I want more out of Carson. And I expect more, and I hope it does happen because we're going to need it against Green Bay, bro. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is a uh, – thank God we have 10 days rest because this right. game is uh, not looking good. All right, everybody. We'll see you guys on Monday. Have a great, safe weekend. I appreciate you guys for coming by and uh, stopping by and talking ball with us. We want to hear from you guys in the comment section. What is your reaction to the game? What's some big takeaways from it? What's a good uh, – a defensive player that stood out besides Benjamin St. Juicy you'd like to hear. What is and your who thoughts? on offense stood out to you? Yeah, guys. and who and then with this team overall, we want to hear from you guys. Where are you at with this team now that they are two and four after winning four straight, winning their first game since week one? Want to hear from you guys. Yeah. All right, everybody. It's a victory Friday. Have a great, safe weekend. We'll see you again on Monday. I'm Kyle. And uh, I'm deeply closeted. All right, everybody. Washington football. Woo! Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Kyle. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. And if you liked what you saw, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you get notified when anything new is uploaded to the channel. Also, we just launched theburgundyzone.com. You can go there and find all of our latest news, articles, and the latest episodes that are uploaded. Again, we also have the Discord chat server where all of our VIP folks are in, like Andy Burroughs, Scott Hartley, Sergio Martin is in there as well. Don't miss out on the Discord chat server. Go and check that out. Until next time, everybody, watching the football. Hey!